Today we're putting Harley Benton's SC1000 to the test. Can you hear the difference between the $177 SC1000 and a Gibson Flying V67 reissue or a Firebird Studio? I'm gonna play some samples from a song my old band recorded and you'll have to decide if what you're hearing is the Harley Benton or a Gibson. Then we'll find out if you picked correctly. So, round one. This Harley Benton features Harley Benton brand HBZ active pickups, nothing fancy. The Flying V, which I stupidly sold years ago, sported Gibson's hottest pickup, the 500T, in the bridge. Both guitars were recorded through a Mesa stiletto half stack and mic'd with a single ribbon mic. I'm about to play you both clips back to back. The samples have no EQ and no effects, just dry, unedited, unaltered tone for a true comparison. Here we go. So what'll it be? If you thought number one was the Harley Benton, then you were terribly, terribly wrong. It was the Flying V. Number two was the Harley Benton. Did you get it right? And which one did you like better? Let me know in the comments. Before we move on to round two though, here is the Harley Benton sample in the mix with EQ. Round two adds a twist. You're about to hear a Flying V through a Shure SM57 mic and a Harley Benton through Amplitude's Virtual Mesa Mark IV amp. It's not even real. Can you guess which clip is which? Round two, fight. <laughs> So what'll it be? A lifetime supply of nothing is at stake. If you guessed that number one was the Flying V, then you would be absolutely wrong. It was the Harley Benton through a fake Mesa amp. Amplitude's Mark IV sounded pretty darn good now. If you're interested in that, you can find the link in the video description here, along with some of the other gear I used in this video. Clip number two, was the Flying V through an SM57. Before we hear the lead guitar samples, here is the Harley Benton sample you just heard in the mix with EQ. It's time for round three, lead guitar. You're about to hear the Harley Benton mic'd with a ribbon mic versus a Gibson Firebird Studio. The Harley Benton was played through the Mesa Stiletto tube amp, while the Firebird, which features Gibson 498 pickups, was played through a 90s Mesa Dual Rectifier amp. Again, no EQ, no plugins, just raw, unedited sound. Take your best guess, which sample is the HB and which is the Firebird? Here we go. All right, if you guessed number one was the Harley Benton, you would be right. The Firebird was clip number two. Here is the Harley Benton EQ'd and in the mix in the actual song. All of the song clips used the bridge pickup, but I did use the neck pickup of the Harley Benton through Amplitude's Mark IV in the intro of this video if you want to hear what the SC1000's neck pickup can do. Final thoughts. I've set my tone the same on my half stack for years. The HBZ pickups on the SC1000 were noticeably hotter than the Flying V, Gibson's hottest pickup but they also lacked some mid-range and body clarity in the mid-range compared to the Gibson. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. You'll probably want to take the hiss out of this guitar with some EQ in the 2 to 4K range. 
If you ask me, those pickups really aren't that bad. I mean, I think they're pretty decent and they hold their own. I'm sure the EMGs are probably better. You can pay 150 bucks more or so and get a pair of EMGs in this guitar. But I think these pickups surprisingly hold their own. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you noticed a difference or had a preference. The tone of these pickups reminds me of Avenged Sevenfold's B-side album, Diamonds in the Rough. Check out the song Demons, the first track on that album, because the tone that they use, to me, sounds pretty similar to the tone that this guitar puts out. It's pretty close. In a minute, I'm going to play the HB playing a sick riff with the Firebird. The HB is panned about 75% to the left and the Firebird to the right. You can grab a B-Stock model of the SC-1000 for $147 plus shipping. And occasionally Harley Benton has loyalty sales, and they just had one for $133. I think I will be using it again on future recordings. It's probably not going to be my main guitar, but I wouldn't be afraid to use it. I do have a full video review of this Harley Benton if you want to check that out, and a video on how to fix the bridge if you're having trouble setting your intonation. Here's the Harley Benton and the Firebird together in my favorite part of this song. 